Hey, what's going on guys? We have two cameras in the hand today. I'm gonna to do a comparison between the Fujifilm X-T30 here, X-T30, and the Fujifilm X-T3 here. Product display showcase mode on the ZV-1 here. Let's see how that looks. The reason I wanna do this video is because I bought this X-T30 for a really good deal. I probably just had gear acquisition sensor one night and I was on Facebook Marketplace and I saw somebody selling this X-T30. I, I got a lot of these accessories that are on it but they were selling this X-T30 really good condition for $500. I asked them if they would take $450 and they said yes. It was weird because it said that they wanted to meet up locally, but they were in Washington DC and I'm in central Pennsylvania, but it just so happened that I was going to Washington DC for a shoot like a couple days later. So I met up with them and I checked it out and it was really, I was, I was excited I wanted to buy it, but for some reason my Venmo kept failing. So I wasn't able to buy it then and then a couple days later I paid for him and he shipped it to me, but a little side tangent about this X-T30. So I got it because it was a really good price, and then I bought this wood grip for it because I didn't think it was very comfortable to shoot without it, and then I got this eyepiece for it because it was not, the viewfinder is pretty small in comparison to my X-T3. Um, the reason we're comparing it to the X-T3 is obviously it's the little brother to the X-T3. It's a little bit thinner than the X-T3. <laughs> the X-T3 is so overexposed in the bright light right here. Um, it's a little bit slightly shorter, but not very by very much. I have a grip on both of them, so they're both a little bit bigger than they would be otherwise. But I always put a grip on my cameras, basically. And I also have a lens on each of them that's kind of representative of how I would shoot. I would probably be putting a slightly larger, heavier lens on the X-T3 because it's a lot more comfortable on there. Shooting smaller lenses on the X-T30 because the big lenses are very uncomfortable on this camera. My X-T3 is pretty beat up because it's my workhorse. I use it for all my paid projects, as you might be able to see. Some scuff marks on there and chips in the paint. This X-T30 is still in really good condition. But after shooting with both of these and kind of going back and forth, I think I'm gonna sell on this X-T30. I don't like it. There's, there's differences between this and the X-T3 that I, I just, I'm not very happy with the X-T30. More often than not, I'm shooting lenses that are big enough that they're kind of uncomfortable on this. Even with this wooden grip, it's a little bit better, but I don't know. And it's kind of weird because I also at one point owned the X-T10 and I really like that camera, but for whatever reason, I can't really get, get on with this, this X-T30. So I do think I'm gonna be listing this on eBay. But before I do that, I figured I might as well make a video since I, I shot with it for a couple months. If you're looking for like comparisons of image quality, it doesn't really make sense because they had the exact same sensor. It's, it's just the little brother, the X-T3 has some features removed. It's a little bit smaller, exact same sensor, exact same image quality. Pretty much the same video quality as well, except that it can only do 8-bit versus the X-T3's 10-bit. But other than that, it can do all the 4K, 4K 60, uh, H HD 120 frames, um, very good image quality. And I have shot actually the past couple of my videos on this X-T30, um, but the autofocus is exactly the same as the X-T3 and everything. So it doesn't, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't make sense. I have two X-T3s. I have this one and I have the one I'm shooting this video on. I don't need an X-T30 on top of that. I'll tell you at the end of this video what I'm planning to do with the money from selling this and you can tell me if it's a good idea. So the major differences between these cameras are the build quality. This is not weather sealed. This is. This also has magnesium alloy. It is like metally, but it's kind of plasticky here on the top. Magnesium alloy on the, on the top plate versus like true metal, but the metal on, on this X-T3 has been scratched to shit. And uh, this magnesium alloy is actually held up better though. I don't think uh, the person I bought this off of or me really ran it through very tough situations. So another difference is that the X-T3 here, you can see it flips up, it flips down, and it also flips out and up like this for shooting portraits kind of down low. While the X-T30 here only flips up and down and then <laughs> Well, that's another problem here I gotta talk about. It flips up and down, but it does not flip up. Or flip out and up, you know what I'm saying? Another problem is that uh, with this X-T30 here, switch to this camera, oh, that was actually very fast. With this X-T30 here, the viewfinder is much smaller, so I bought this viewfinder attachment. It's really the only comfortable way to shoot this thing in bright conditions but it's too big. It flips like that and it, it covers the screen partially. I had the same problem with my X-T10. 
So then if I'm like viewing my images, it, it blocks, especially if I have it out like this, if I'm like looking through the viewfinder, then I want to look down at, at the back screen on my images, I have to pop this back down to see that or else it covers too much of the screen. And then like it gets either caught up under, do you see that? It gets caught up under this screen when you put it away or it gets over it. And then I'm just constantly fiddling with this. And I much prefer just the bigger, better viewfinder on the X-T3 that I don't have to hassle with that. It's a much smaller attachment. I don't have to constantly open and close it. And the viewfinder is much nicer. It's bigger and just brighter and higher quality, just better. It's just a much more enjoyable shooting experience. Without the grips on both of these cameras, they're both too uncomfortable in my opinion. But with the grips, this wood grip on my X-T3, it is just absolutely perfect ergonomically. Like this is so comfortable to hold. This is comfortable even with the 50 to 140 in my opinion, with this grip. With this, even with this little grip, it's still just not big enough to get a good wrap around with my hands. It's still just, I don't know. It's just not very comfortable. No matter what, with, with a grip, without a grip, I cannot get a comfortable hold on this camera, especially for a lens of any size. And most of my lenses are a lot bigger than this pancake lens. It's not as fun of a shooting experience, in my opinion, for the viewfinder, being smaller, just having to constantly fiddle with this. The grip is just not as more, not as comfortable. But if you're like how I've been using this camera mainly is I have this Peak Design straps on both of these cameras. I've been just mainly holding it around, like carrying it around my neck. And for that case, if you have a small lens like this, it is a lot easier on the neck than a heavier X-T3. But if I have a heavier lens like this, the, the neck strap doesn't just go around the neck. I put it over the shoulder and have my camera at my side and it kind of negates that problem anyway, so. Another slight difference is that this material just on the front of the X-T30 has like a little more of a rubbery, grippy kind of feel, but the back of it, just like the X-T3 all around. Actually, the back of this feels more plasticky. The X-T3 some, feels somewhere in between that rubbery and plasticky material, but it's consistent all the way around the body. It's not different on the front and the back like the X-T30. Another thing that a lot of people complained about, the X-T30 has no D-pad. It's only the joystick. And I much prefer the X-T3 having the D-pad and the joystick so I can map these as custom buttons. I have one as white balance, focus, um, what do I have it? White balance, film simulations, focus, Bluetooth, because I don't use the one, because it's so many custom buttons. But I much prefer having too many custom buttons over not enough. Another problem people complained about is accidentally hitting this Q button on the X-T30 way too often. And that is annoying because it is right where your thumb goes. It is pretty easy to hit because it's just at this place where, I don't know, it's just the camera's too small and uncomfortable to hold, so you constantly hit that. And uh, you can turn it off, but the problem is that because there's not enough custom buttons on this because of the lack of a D-pad, without the Q button, it's like almost essential to have that Q button to access your white balance and a bunch of different settings. Otherwise you're diving into the menu and that's just not fun. You wanna be able to access it more quickly. So um, the Q button is a major nuisance and when I'm shooting with it, I always am hitting the Q button. I didn't think it would be as much of an issue as everybody was saying, but it absolutely is, so. The last thing is that ever since I got this X-T30, the on and off, switch is like kind of sticky. It's like not super easy to turn. It's like a way too much resistance. And then the shutter button, it's like hard to do the half press to autofocus but without accidentally taking a picture. And I took so many accidental photos with this that I didn't mean to take because of that shutter button and on and off switch not being as nice as the X-T3 where, you know, on both of my X-T3s that I've had, it's just a lot nicer. So. All around, <laughs> was this an unnecessary purchase for me? Absolutely. I did not need to buy this X-T30 and you know, I could have told you that. You could have told me that. Anybody could have guessed that. I already have so many cameras, it is so unnecessary. My only justification was that I, sometimes I shoot interviews and having three different camera angles of cameras that produce an identical image would be very nice for that to have a individual shot of each person talking in, in the interview and then the wide shot of both of them. So I would probably use this on the wide shot locked off focus and then I have two of my X-T3s with more um, uh, telephoto lenses on each of the subjects with autofocus. And I figured that would be a good setup, but 
I have somebody I usually work with on video projects who has an X-H1. It's basically the same image. I don't think it's necessary for me to keep this X-T30 just for that one instance where I might shoot an interview once a year where I need a third camera angle. I can totally just call on my friend. So yeah, I'm gonna sell this and with the money I'm thinking, and tell me if you think this is a good idea in the comments below, please. I'm thinking of taking the money that I sell this for and buying a cheap Sony full frame camera, the, the cheapest mirrorless camera that I can get, basically like an A7 or something, for two reasons. One is to just have a full frame camera to be able to review lenses in full frame if any uh, third party manufacturers or whatever reach out to the channel. It just helps the channel be able to reach a whole different audience and a whole different system outside of just Fujifilm. I also have a micro four thirds camera that Frank sent to me who Frank also sent me a couple things that I've, I've talked about in the past two videos. Um, so. I have a micro four thirds camera now, I have an APS-C camera, and then if I bought a full frame camera with the money that I sold this for, I could be able to review a more wide array of things for this channel. I think it would help this channel out overall, and I'd be able to help more people. And then, honestly, I wanna make content that's not necessarily just for Fujifilm people. I wanna make photography content and videography content to a broader extent, to a broader audience, so. Um, I think that this that would help me um, more than having a third X-Trans 4 Fujifilm camera, and I also have an X-E1, so I don't need four Fujifilm cameras. That's not necessary. I do think that I, it's good for me to have two X-T3s, it, just for video purposes, to have two identical cameras. Okay, fair enough. I don't need an X-T30 as well. The ZV-1 is even debatable if I need this thing like this. I'm just stretching. I'm just giving, coming up with a reason to use it for this video. I don't know if any of you care about hearing about this intimately about how I use my gear or, or anything like that. Or I think a lot of you people are coming to this channel <laughs> just, just for the specific video you click on. But whatever. This has been a rambly video. I had more fun with this one. And um, yeah. Goodbye X-T30, I don't like it personally. I think per my advice to you, if you're looking at getting your first Fujifilm camera and if you are between an X-T3 or an X-T30, at this point, because the X-T5 has come out, just, just get an X-T3. It's not gonna be that much more expensive than the X-T30 and it is, it is gonna be that much more better for the expense that it is. It's gonna be better value for your money, trust me. Leave a like in this video, leave a comment down below. I don't think anyone's even watching at this point. Come in a boxing glove emoji or just something completely random if you're watching at this point because I really don't think many people are interested in what I have to say on this channel personally outside of the gear. So uh, I'd like to know. Anyway, I can't stop talking. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>